Great. Well, welcome to Northern Powerhouses Business Success Stories, where we discuss with local business leaders their backgrounds, their successes and challenges, and what drives them forward. T today we have with us Paul Bowen, Bowen Solicitors of Harrogate and Leeds, and I think potentially a couple of other new locations coming soon, Paul. Um, firstly, please, if you'd introduce yourself, what you do and help you help your clients best. Yes, yeah, sure. So, um, so I'm founder of Irwin Solicitors, um, uh, going back early 1990s, actually. Um, so for a while, but we've gone from what was just me. Uh, there's about 55 of us now, so a fair wow. size law firm. Um, so headquarters in Harrogate, we're also in Leeds, uh, we're also in Sheffield, and so there's one more location that's under wraps at the moment. Um, uh, and, and doing different things in the different locations. So in in, in Leeds and in Sheffield, we're um, largely branded as Bowen's Digital. So we're, we're focusing on servicing technology clients. Um, and so we're also involved in, very involved, I'm a director, founder director of Leeds Digital Festival. Um, so, um, and then in Harrogate, we're um, more more based in sort of tr more traditional areas, if you like, um, yeah. except we don't ever see ourselves as traditional. So, um, so what we what we do very much is um, focus on the things that we can do really well. So, uh, if we can't do them really, really well, exceptionally well, then we won't do them at all. Um, so, we don't try and be jack of all trades. We right. we're, we're sort of a group of specialists, if you like. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, um, I, I just sort of, what would you say would make the perfect client for you? But so if there's someone out there that would be the, the, I always find in business, if we can match our skill set with your needs, that's what makes a perfect client. What, what would they sort of be like for you or what, what type of people? Um, I think generally, um, I, I suppose I'm thinking, because most of my, my clients are really commercial clients, but the, the equivalent applies in, in um, what we refer to as private clients. So um, it's, Clients who have, a, have a, a good understanding of, of their own position, their own business and so on, um, and can communicate it well, um, and that they sort of reciprocate in the way that we reciprocate to them, if you like, so that they're, they respond um, accurately. If we ask questions, they respond um, in good time, so we can keep things moving along they, they don't give us half the story, they give us the proper story. Um, uh, and, and, and I suppose also that they value what it is that we do. Um, um, so part, part, of, part of that, for instance, uh, the number of people say, oh, it's a really straightforward thing, which means sort of, you don't charge us anything because it's really straightforward. <laughs> Generally that's code for, it's not straightforward. The only thing is straightforward because you don't understand what it is you're asking. Yes. Um, so, you know, we know, you know, legal fees, they don't come cheap. Um, and so we always plan to make sure that we give really good value. Um, but we like, we want to be appreciated for that. Yep. So it's those different aspects, really. Brilliant. And I think that, that two-way two thing of, you know, people, clients valuing what we do makes them a great client and, and, and that makes sense and, and I guess similar to what with some of the things we do with, with our clients the, the open honest communication is so key because the, the hidden information is obviously something that could trip everybody up uh, over time I would I would imagine mm. so I, I'm keen to know specifically about you a little bit about your background um, how you chose how and why you chose to found Berwins as, a, as an owner and a, and a leader as opposed to potentially obviously i'm sure you if you'd have chosen to you could have had a very successful career in partnership in 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 a different firm what what was the driving force behind that paul um partly partly it was just sort of almost circumstances that led to led to it so originally the office that i had in harrogate um was uh, it was a branch office of the leeds firm um uh, it was going reasonably well, but the Leeds firm, so this was, was in the 1980s, branch offices were a big thing, everybody was opening branch offices. Um, it wasn't a great business model in a sense, because you just duplicate all your expenses, um, yes. and, and you couldn't do work remote working and all the things that we're able to do now. So, 
Um, so that firm decided it no longer wanted branch offices. Um, so I acquired the office I was working in. Um, for about four years, I was just on my own self practitioner and I sort of, I didn't really want to be a self practitioner I wanted to be part of creating a big organization. So I looked for potential partners. Um, originally, the first partners that I had were in two locations, one in um, Geisley, one in Otley, and part of that worked for a few years, part of it didn't work for very long. Um, but, but actually what happened was those bits didn't really grow, but the Harrogate core, um, where, which is where I was, that did grow. Um, and it became the case that really putting all the energy into making Harrogate uh, successful was, uh, became, became the thing. So, so whereas originally I, most of what I did was house conveyancing, um, as time went by, I sort of managed to, things that I didn't really need to do or didn't want to do, I was able to drop doing those things so that my uh, core of my legal work was increasingly on a commercial. Uh, yep. and, and we had other good people we brought in who could do the other things at least as well as I could. Great. Great. And that, I mean, so from, from you in, in sole so practitioner in office to... 55 people um you you must have overcome some challenges what what would be some of the key challenges you've had to overcome over that period um well <laughs> so when when you get things like 2008 2009 come along and you think that all your work's going to dry up um and you have to make some really difficult decisions on on where you're really guessing how much work there might be and what resources you're going to to need but we we lost some people we lost some some people who wouldn't have look, looked to lose at that time um uh so is that um generally speaking the sort of the partnership i mean it's a limited company now but a partnership as it grew um has been pretty co cohesive and collegious and we've we've kept together well um grown sort of almost as almost as friends really so it's been a really good thing there's been sort of one or two people have left along the way um but that's inevitable for yeah. that period of time and that number of people uh, yes but generally speaking it's um, people have uh just at the end of last month actually someone retired uh they've been a uh so not a lot of sort of partnership time and love retired they've been with us on and off, they sort of left and come back and left and come back um, over 30 years, really. Um, so there's quite a lot of people who we sort of look at and say, well, actually, they, they made their career with us and then they retired through us. And that's, wow. sort of, that's always nice when you see people, they sort of finish their career with you, having been with you for a long time. Yeah, that must be very, yeah, I can imagine that would be very rewarding. Um, mm -hmm. and so, so over that period, obviously challenges have come and gone. What, what, what might you say some of the biggest things you've learned um, in business and, and potentially life through through the last thirty years? Um, I think you, it's, it's that you've got you've got to look after people. Whether they're looking after clients is the sort of the obvious thing. But you've got to look after your own people um, uh, really well and and. I mean, there's certainly, there's certainly sometimes when you sort of, you do get cross with people and you, you, you know, you think they've not made a good job for something and it becomes frustrating. And no doubt it shows as well, because um, you can't avoid that. But, um, but, but the bigger picture is, is you've got to look after people, you've got to bring them along and give them opportunities, um, uh, treat them well, um, treat them as something more than someone who's going to make money for you if you like um because uh if you treat people like commodities then they will just go for yep. only where there's more money we you know we've never said we can pay more than anyone else but we we have said and um, we get loads of feedback on this that we're that we're a great place to work and it's been consistently right. that for you know over the whole time really it it's really so true it the, the, the idea that customer is always right and, and it's, it's look after the customers number one is 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 obviously they're very very important to us we, we all need customers but the, the, the reality is customers come and go 
you know, by either choice or by just in of, of, of situations. Whereas our team, you know, our team stay with us way longer than typically clients will. So looking after them first is is really key. And um, and and you know, what, what I was talking to a business recently, and their main focus was making their team as delighted to work for that company as possible. And, and they they in themselves were the great ambassadors. They, they, you know, everyone was happy, everyone was smiling, everyone was a great advocate for the company they worked for, not because they had to, but because they loved it. And I think when you find that 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 winning formula, looking after the team, they will look after the customers and they the customers look after the business. So it just yeah. makes perfect sense. Um, so uh, I'm interested, do, do, do you have any sort of major influences in, on your, uh, in your business career? Is there anyone that's been um, a, a big influence to you, either directly, personally, or, or people that you follow that, that have made a difference? Um, not, not hugely. There's certain sort of things that people have said at different times that have stuck in my mind. And um, uh, there's one that I, I sort of keep, do keep replaying to people. Um, so the, this was from the firm that I was part of that, that then sort of got rid of its Harrogate office in effect. Um, and, and one one time I sort of I was I was really busy and, and he asked me to go and meet someone and, and I sort of said something like, Well, I, so I'm I'm really too busy to do that. And, and he sort of said, No, you can't do that. You can't only look at the work in front of your nose, you've got to look at what comes next as well. Yep. Um, and if you only do what's in front of your nose, there might not be anything else coming next. Um, so I, so I do I keep saying to people, I know you're busy, but you've got to look at what your pipeline is like. Um, and so, particularly for instance, November and December last year, I sort of said, you know, listen, I know that we're all getting weary. So I think we were all, all getting weary, but. Um, just look ahead to January and February. Don't get to the end of December and think, oh, well, I've cleared out my, cleared out my cupboards effectively. Um, you've got to think, what are you going to be doing then um, to keep the business rolling on then? Yes. So that, that's something I don't, but in terms of sort of uh, um, influences, the other, one of the other things that came from way on, early on that I, that I read that had a big impact on me was um, was the Pursuit of Excellence by Tom Peters. Um, so I'm not I'm not a I am a big reader, but I'm not a big reader of uh, sort of management gurus and so on. But yeah. but but that was something that um, when when I started the firm out in sort of 1993, um, without particularly a, a plan, sort of th that was October, and then December I went on holiday. Um, and I'd taken that book with me and I sort of went and read it and sat on the beach uh, and kind of wrote a plan of um, what sort of what excellence meant for not the sort of thing that Tom Peters was writing about, Coca-Cola or IBM or whatever it was, but for a small law firm. Right. Um, and, and, and that became a sort of being a constant manifesto, really, um, that puts... Uh, We've always said that, that we have care, care at the core of everything we do. So, um, for instance, on, we've got our. So I'm looking. I'm looking at a wall that's over there. We have our. We have our values written up on our walls. Right. Um, and and at the core of all that is is the word care, which is written bigger than anything else. Um, so um, so that's so that's been a theme that's followed its way through, and and it's been consistent and it's still consistently there as well. It hasn't changed. Great. That's great. And, and uh, for me, our values and our, our purpose are, you know, are just number one for every business because they're not just lend, they're, they're not just attract um, our clients, they attract the right team members. If you've got a great match of values, I think that's more important than a match of goals. It, it's this is who we are and this is what we choose to be important. And if you believe that too, then we've got a great match, whether you're a, an employee, a customer or even a supplier. Um, or, or, or some form of partner, strategic partner. And yeah, without them, then, then you know, nobody can know. I think it was Tom Peters, I'm pretty sure it's Tom Peters coined that I, the phrase of um, having, it's not just having the right people on the bus, it's the right people in the right seats. Um, but if you take it to the next level, for me, 
if that's if you use that analogy, our value and vision is our values and vision of what's on the destination on the front of the bus. And if we don't, if we're not clear on that, people don't know what bus to get on or where this bus is going. Um, so being clear on who we are, where we're going, and what's important to us is 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 key to get the right people. Um, as I say, whether that's employees or or customers or or even suppliers. Mm. So, so I, I always, I often ask just people if there's any particular quote they have picked up, which I'm not sure they may, may have, but uh, my, my, my current favourite has been over this whole damn COVID situation was right back to um, uh, Charles Darwin and the origin of species, when he said it's not, it's not the strongest or the most intelligent species of, that survive, but the ones that are most adaptable to change. And it just that just re resonates in my mind, uh, has done for the last two years. Is there anything that, 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 that you have, um, that you picked up over time. I appreciate you. You may not, but um... Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I think that I think the Charles Darwin thing is interesting because the sort of survival of the fittest didn't mean the, those who can run the furthest. It's the, those who are them who fit the best. Yes. Um, so it's it's that, isn't it? But otherwise, I think I don't think so. No, um, there are there are certain things that. Um, so I, I run and I cycle a lot, and the various sort of sometimes phrases just come to my mind. Um, and one that that came to, that came to my mind um, early on in the sort of pandemic and so on, when we had people working from home, uh, as, as we still do, was um, was that so we which we now keep repeating is that that people work best from the place that works best for them. Um, so say to people, so some people working from home just doesn't work, so yep. we make them work from home, but, but if people can work effectively from home, we're happy to let them work effectively from home, and, and um, so we're not, we're not making people do things in ways which are not as well suited to them. Right. So, so I have that, that phrase came to my mind, as I, and I know exactly, with these phrases, I know exactly where I was when I did it. I was cycling up to some traffic lights in Chapel Allerton <laughs> on my way home from our Leeds office. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's, uh, yes, I, I, I know you do, you do a lot of running. You do, you do quite a lot of work for charity as well, from, from um, what I know about you. It, it, did that come just naturally? Or was that something that you specifically wanted to get involved with? Um, it's, uh, I come from, so my, my family's a Jewish family and, and, and Jewish religion and Jewish culture is, is very much about um, charitable giving um, at all at all times. So it's always been part of my my culture and my family and so on. So um, I ran. So I, I've raised a lot of money by running and by triathlons and such like um, well, running in triathlons really. Um, so I ran in the very first London Marathon, um, uh, and the time I think a lot of people did sponsored walks, but not many people did sponsored runs. Yes, uh, but, but I raised money then, and then I raised money to the London Marathon uh, this October just gone, and um, so again I raised money for the same charity then, um, and and for another charity as well, and and I've just sort of raised money for charities as I've gone along. The problem is, if I was to if I was to run ten k and ask people to for money, they would never give me money for running 10k because they they know that I do that every every other day. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I mean that's fascinating. So you're the first marathon you you the first London marathon you've just done the, the last one. What I mean, what difference have you seen in that period? It, I, I would imagine it, there must be quite significant ones. Yes, it was well it, on all sorts of levels. I mean, firstly, so that and I really wanted to do that then because that was 1981 and 2021. So that's 40 years. Yes. So yeah. Quite a, quite a stretch. Um, so firstly, the first London Marathon, there were about, about six and a half thousand people running. Um, uh, and um, so obviously this time there was know, about 50,000, I think, or something yeah. like that. Um, so, uh, and it's now a very slick operation. Now, yes. uh, initially they... They were almost making up as they were going along. Um, uh, and then also, you kind of look at what people were wearing to run those days, or what they wear now, the sort of technical fabrics that we wear now. Um, I was running in, in sort of cotton socks and cotton t-shirt. 
Um, and you would never think of doing that because they just get so wet so quickly. Yes. Uh, but they were like, that, that was the premium fabric was wearing cotton. Of course. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I just imagine it must have, there must be so many changes, as you say, across the whole thing. Um, so, so I guess, you know, both both business and, and life and, and the things that you're doing with the running and your cycling, what, what, what have you learned about yourself over this whole sort of 40 years of, of, of business and life? Um, it's, I suppose, partly about um, partly not, not putting limits in the way of what you can do. Um, yeah. That you can, you, can, you can always do a lot more than you think you can do. Um, uh, and it, I mean, part of that comes down to the individual. I, actually, I always used to think that I was quite a laid back individual. Um, until it was pointed out that I'm not at all. <laughs> I'm actually competitive and driven, um, albeit in, in, in quite a sort of not in an aggressive or um, loud way. Um, yeah. Uh, and and that uh, so essentially if if I if I set out to do something, firstly it will happen, and secondly it's probably not a good idea to try and stop me. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where do you feel you get the drive from? What is it? What is the trigger for that? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it might. Uh, I mean, part of it may be it's difficult to know to know if this is the case. But being from a from an immigrant background, um, uh, there's there's part of part of that. Um, uh, so, I suppose my 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 grandparents who who immigrated originally from Belarus um, right. around early 1900s um so uh, so part of that um there's a sort of entrepreneurial streak in my family yep. um so uh, so yeah and it's difficult to know what whether it's background whether it's natural personality not sure no, that's great it's, it's it's fascinating and i can see the thread through you know your running and, and various things i think uh, i think for people to often need the drive uh, use the drive in, in, in many different ways so mm. so I guess, I guess looking forward what 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 do you see the future looking like for Berwins over the next five to ten years and and what challenges if any will you will you face um i, I think uh I, I i would hope i anticipate that there will be um continued growth um yeah. Uh, we've got because I mean sometimes people think that Berwins is Berwins is kind of me writ large, but it's it's not. And I've, I've been um, sort of tried to make it so that that is never the case because yeah. um, because the firm doesn't stop when I stop, so to speak. Um, uh, so we've got generations in place, we've got succession in place. Um, not just for me, but for any other any others of the shareholders and directors and so on. Um, so I don't. I'm not the. I'm not the sort of predominant owner of the business. Um, ownership is spread amongst the directors. Um, right. um, so so that if someone leaves, their shares can be bought, um, and that applies to me as much as to anybody else. Um, so we've we've tried to build an organisation that. that potentially has longevity um, and, and isn't, you know, you'll sometimes get some a firm that's led by a big personality and the yep. if that personality goes, you'll think, well, what are they? What, what continues? But, um, yes. but hopefully that's, I'm sure that's not the case because uh, people have been used to dealing with all sorts of people in senior positions through the firm. Um, and, uh, and, and I don't think it depends on me being there so um that, that's so i say uh at some stage i will either want to want to stop or people will want me to stop um, <laughs> um and in, in any case my client facing role um has changed over time so um so so my role currently is a more strategic role than a than, than client facing all the time um so and and 
yeah, and so that way it doesn't, it really doesn't depend entirely on me by any means. Great. No, that's great. It's great to do that because it, and it, it can be a challenge in many different levels to, mm -hmm. to decouple yourself, you know, when you've got your name above the door, as it were, uh, to decouple the personality from the business. So that's great to great, great to that you've done that. Um, well, look, it's been fascinating talking so far. I, I just, a, I guess, a couple of a, a, a final questions. It, if, if anyone's listening to this thing and they're thinking of going into business, what, what would you say to them? Um, I suppose if you if you're going to business, firstly, you have to, you can't have a sort of nine to five type of mindset. It has to be whatever it takes. Um, uh, and you have to, you, you definitely have to be prepared to do that. Um, I think particularly a founder and, and a sort of owner manager of a business has to, has to be all in. You can't be, you can't be part in. Um, so, um, and it has to be something that you actually, that actually gives you on some level, even if it's in a kind of masochistic way, but gives you some, gives you pleasure, at least it gives you satisfaction, I think. Yeah. Um, so people who are sort of, I don't know, shoehorned into a particular job because that's what my parents wanted them to do. It's, they're not going to have, have that passion. Um, yeah. And, and you've got to, you know, you've got to be passionate about, passionate about what you do. Um, because if you're not, it's not genuine, people know. Yep. People, you know, people here, um, they, they know 100% how much, how much this business means to me. Um, yes. And, uh, and, 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 and it means, it means that to them as well. Brilliant. That's wonderful. Well, I, I, I would say you you uh, you share a quote with with our action coaches founder Brad Sugars. It's actually written on my whiteboard and has been for many years, which is do whatever it takes. And um, it's always been in the front of my mind is yeah, we've got to do whatever it takes. That's 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 the job. Um, the, the other one actually, with the, the, one of the CEOs of, of Action Coach, going back a few years ago, um, I remember he he told me a long time ago was the job of a business owner is to solve problems. Um, and, and often problems, the more problems you get, it's probably due to the growth you're having. So obviously the more successful we are often, the more problems come, come with that. And, and, and if we don't like problems, get out of business to some extent, because it's, and it's accepting that and, and, and um, being comfortable with that, I think is, is really key to, to accepting our, our, our job and our lot as the business owner and leader. Mm. Um, so, well, one final question. Um, I'm just interested to know um, what would what would the best advice you could give uh, to an 18 year old you, if you were able to go back in time? What would you what advice would you give? <laughs> um, well, I suppose an 18 year old me had just started doing a history degree, um, not a law degree, um, and. And I did history because I love history. Um, so again, it's sort of it's 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 sort of it's not fo not follow your dreams because there's a there are catches in following following your dreams, but uh, but but do pursue your passions. Yeah, wonderful. I, and and I can see that from from obviously from talking to you and, and knowing and, and knowing about you for for, for quite some time. It's. Um, it, it's wonderful to see and that fact that you you moved from from history to law and, and as you say you get satisfaction from what you do and and clearly um i would think that must be a, a fundamental part of the success you've had so anyone to go from uh, themselves to 55 people in a firm is 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 very significant over, over that period of time yeah um, passions includes they includes even running when you when you've been running for 40 years uh so and not having people say, oh, you, you shouldn't be doing this because you're now this age or that age, but just keep doing it because your legs allow you to keep, allow you to keep doing it. it? Brilliant. Least... No, I totally agree. My, 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 probably my big, one of my biggest passions is skiing and I'm the same as you. It's like, I'm going to keep doing it until, well, until it's impossible to do it. There, there won't be an age limit. Um, in fact, I was lucky enough, I remember, um, well, I was lucky enough to live in Canada for, for a season and there was a, um a couple of 80 year olds would come out skiing and mm. perhaps once or twice a week and that was it not for you know for a couple of hours not not sort of a full day but kept skiing and um, 
keep doing what you love and, and keep loving what you do, I guess, is... is, well, my, is my father skied into his 80s. Um, uh, he's now 94 and he still goes to the gym. Wow. Wowzers. <laughs> Well, I, I suspect that's part of where you get your drive from. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. That's 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 stunning. Uh, thank you. Well, look, on, on on that note, I would really like to thank you for such a fascinating um, interview and discussion. That's been been really fascinating, Paul. And uh, mm. I I can see why you and Berwins are so, so successful from from you know from, from the way you've talked to what we've talked about today. And um, thank you so much. Is, is there any last words you'd like to to pass on to anyone that might be listening or watching? Um, just, I suppose I, I would, I mean, I hope that the, if you like, the, the passion that I have for what I do and for the firm that, that, that I've built, um, reflects in the, the firm, the, the firm that we are, um, uh, and if people like that, then, you know, we, we, Great. we'd love to help you. Great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Paul. My pleasure.